Here's the deal, there is no industry standard that manufacturers have to use when they put the sleep capacity rating or the size on their tents. And so it can be really difficult to understand how big of a tent you actually need because there's variation within one rating. So if you buy a four person size tent, you might not know exactly what size you're gonna get. And even more so, you might not know, if I have four people that I'm going camping with, what size tent do I need? Do I need a four person rated tent or do I actually need something bigger like a six person size tent? And so it can be really difficult to figure these things out. And if if you don't believe me that there's this much variation between tent sizes, allow me just 10 seconds to prove you wrong. Earlier this year, I tested six different tents, all of which were rated with a six person capacity. And I found that these tents all pretty much had some variation in the floor area or sleep capacity that they had. So some tents I found actually had more than enough for six people to sleep inside, while others I physically could not fit six sleeping pads side by side in, inside the tent. And so it definitely in my testing was not a six person size tent, even though it was rated as a six person size tent. So clearly this is a problem and we need some solution to be able to solve this problem for ourselves so that we know exactly what size tent we're going to need. And so I am an internet self-proclaimed tent expert. And so in this video, I'm gonna do my best to make this an easy decision for you. And we're gonna walk through three methods that you can use to decide exactly what size tent you should be going for. And make sure you stick around to the end of the video because I'm also gonna be walking through one important element of tent wall design that is often overlooked when people shop for tents. So we'll walk through that. And by the end of this video, I think you'll know exactly what size tent you should be looking for. The first method you can use is a really simple and straightforward one. And that's simply to take the number of people you'll be camping with and then just add two to it. And that becomes the tent capacity that you'll be looking for. So for example, say you have a small family of four, just add two to that number. So that gives you six. And you're gonna be looking for a six person rated tent in order to accommodate your family of four. This works most of the time, but with any good rule of thumb, there are some exceptions. So for example, say you want a tent just for yourself. You just want a one person tent. Well, rather than adding two, which would give you a three person tent, I would suggest in that instance, usually just add one. So if you are one person and you wanna have a little bit of extra wiggle room or just some space to put your gear, then a two person size tent is usually gonna work best for you. And I should also mention that if you're a backpacker, you might think about this a little bit differently, but for car camping, the adding two rule does usually work because it gives you some extra space without making the tent so super huge that it's gonna be unwieldy or just too much to, to deal with. The second method is a really interesting one and that is to take 20 square feet and multiply it by the number of people that you'd be camping with in order to get the minimum floor area for your tent that you're gonna need. So for example, say we have that same family of four, we just take four, multiply it by 20, which is 80. So 80 square feet then is the minimum floor area that we need in our tent in order to accommodate that many people. Now, I must say that I personally don't really like this method because the floor area can be a bit misleading. So for example, you could have a really crazy odd tent that is just one foot long by 80 feet wide, and that would still technically have a floor area of 80 feet, but it would accommodate Nobody, right? Like nobody would be able, be able to sleep in that kind of a tent. This is an extreme example, obviously, but I think you'll get the idea. And so I don't really like or use this method personally, but I know it is one that's talked about online and, and other places. And so I thought it was worth mentioning. The third method is definitely the most accurate. It does take a little bit more legwork on your part, but it is fairly straightforward. So let's walk through it. Let's say you have three people this time and each of you have your own Xped Mega Mat 10 sleeping pad. So you all have the same sleeping pad and we have three of them to deal with here for this calculation. With a quick online search, you can tell that this particular sleeping pad has a length of 72 inches, thereabouts anyway. And so we know that any tent that we're gonna look for is going to need to be at least 84 inches long. And so I'm just taking 72 inches, the rough size of the sleeping pad and adding 12 inches to give you some extra wiggle room. Now we just need to calculate the width. So for these three pads, they're each about 26 inches wide. And if we multiply that by three, that gives us a total width that these pads are side by side of 78 inches. And then let's add four feet just so that we're getting a little bit of wiggle room on each side of each pad. And so that gives us a total of 126 inches, which if you convert that to feet is about 10 and a half feet. And so that's gonna be the rough width that we need as a minimum for these sleeping pads to fit comfortably inside of a tent. So in summary, using this method, we'd be looking for a tent that has overall dimensions of about seven feet by 10.5 feet. And that would fit all three of our sleeping pads together. And that would work out pretty well for us. And so this same rule applies, the same calculation can be used for any type of bed. So you could do it for cots, sleeping pads, air mattresses, etc. And so that's one of the reasons why this one is so good is because it's pretty accurate regardless of what type of bed you're using. But all three of these methods actually ignore something pretty important. And that is the shape of the walls. And what I mean by that is how well are the walls 
elevated vertically and how well are they suspended over the tent because some tents do this a lot better than others. For example, if this is done poorly, then you can have a lot of fabric if you're on the side of the tent actually brushing up on your side or pressing up against your side, which can be really uncomfortable and it can also make you cold and wet from condensation on the side of the tent. And so this can be a big problem and it's really impacted by two main things. The first is the shape of the tent. So in other words, is it a dome style tent or a cabin style tent or a tunnel style tent, something like this. And the two main ones really are just dome and cabin. Cabin style tents tend to do a lot better when it comes to the vertical shape of the walls because since they go up more vertically, there's less of an angle that's going to be pressing the wall of the tent up against whoever's sleeping on the side. On the other hand, dome style tents do also tend to have more curve, which is good for weatherproofing, but it's not so good for that person who's on the side of the tent if it's just allowing that fabric to press up against their legs and body on the edge of the tent there. And the second thing you need to look at is the structure of the tent. So for instance, even within one category of shape for a tent, let's say dome in this instance, say we have two dome shaped tents, one of them could have really good well suspended walls while another one could have less well suspended walls and this is actually the case in a test i did a while back when i compared the coleman sky dome with the rei base camp because the rei base camp actually has two additional cross poles that the sky dome does not and so because of this and i think also because of the quality of the materials the walls of the rei base camp are suspended a lot better and even if you're on the edge of that tent you're a lot more comfortable than you would be in the coleman sky dome because the coleman sky dome doesn't have as much poles reinforcing it and pulling that fabric out which allows it to kind of lay in a little bit and brush up against the side of that person that's on the very edge of the tent. Now at this point you might be wondering, why don't I just size way up and get like the largest tent that I can find, right? And there's actually a few downsides to doing this and so let me just quickly run through those. So number one, all else being equal, larger tents tend to be more expensive if it's the same material, same brand, etc. Number two, larger tents are obviously bulkier, more difficult to transport and lug around. And number three, they are usually more difficult to set up because there's just more things that you have to raise up and hold in high places and that makes it tougher. So for these reasons and maybe even a couple more, it actually is really valuable to get a tent that's right in that Goldilocks zone of the right size for the group that you're going to be going with. And so that's why I run through all of these things. So let me quickly summarize how I would suggest going about sizing a tent and deciding finally, hey, this is the size tent that I'm going to go shopping for. So boiling this all down, I would suggest that you take the following three steps to identify the exact tent that you're going to be buying. So step number one, just use that rule of two method to filter down your options in order to find a tent that's going to work for you. So say we have a family of four, just add two to that number. We're going to be looking for a six person size tent. Now just filter down all of the various options to only six person size tents and that's going to help you out a ton. Step two is from your filtered list now to select one that you like and then take that tent and find the dimensions. Once you find the dimensions of this tent, then use method three that we talked about earlier in this video, which is to look at the dimensions and see, well, what are the dimensions of the beds that I wanna put inside of this? So say you have uh, four different beds that you wanna put inside, get the measurements of the length and width of those beds and make sure that they're going to fit inside of the tent that you're looking at and don't forget to add a little bit of wiggle room on each side. It helps to add at least a foot of room on each of the sides and six inches to a foot on the top and bottom. Six inches on, on the top and bottom is probably enough and that's what I used in my calculations earlier. Then once you've successfully identified a tent that will fit the beds that you have and wanna fit inside with a little bit of wiggle room, then step number three is going to be to validate the shape of the walls. So in the step, what you're gonna to wanna to do is go and try to find some videos of the particular tent that you've identified and to see how well are the sides structured. Is it giving enough vertical structure that I can fit everyone on the inside? And if you're a little bit concerned about it, then maybe you wanna bump up an extra size capacity to make sure you're gonna have enough room for everybody. And so the best way to do this, in my opinion, is actually to go and find videos of the tent that you're looking at because I think product photography on retailers, for example, can be a little bit misleading because they present sort of the best version of that product. And uh, it's not always gonna show some of like the tilt in the walls that you might actually get in reality. And so that's how I would go about it. If you found this video helpful, do hit the like button for me and we'll be back here for our next video next Wednesday. And you can check out somewhere on here on the screen, my playlist of all of my tent reviews if you wanna learn more about the tents that I personally have tested. Thanks, bye now.